Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. Joining us today, Nikki Javala, Washington Post, very much her beat. Uh, and the commander's beat uh, got a little extra on a Friday. Uh, you got to talk to Jaden Daniels today. Uh, we think he's going to wind up being listed as questionable here, Nikki. Um, what have you made of how they've kind of handled this process this week and how, I don't I, like, I don't want to say when I ask it, is it legitimate? Like, of course, they're going through the steps, but how much of this is show and how much of this is, hey, maybe, maybe the kid is going to play on Sunday after all. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, Dan Quinn said this was the process all along. Uh, the plan all along was, you know, to give him some a couple of days of rest and then see if he can go Friday um, and push him to really see if he'd be capable of sustaining a full game um, and then assess him from there. So I wasn't terribly surprised. I kind of thought that was how it would go. I thought, you know, the, the one comment that um, gave me a little bit a pause about his availability this week was when Quinn said he would be week to week. He didn't say day to day. He said week to week. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of what's thrown me on all this. And, you know, of course they're not specifying anything about the nature of the injury, just a rib area injury. Um, so the fact that he was able to participate in team drills fully, um, he was listed as limited today, but he was, um, Quinn said involved in all the team drills. Uh, that's certainly a good sign. Um, I think the more telling thing will be to see how he feels tomorrow um, and then going into Sunday. So I, if I had to guess, they, they haven't announced it yet, um, but if I had to guess, I, I would think they'd probably list him as questionable and then take it all the way up to the game as close as they can. How risky is it to take it to Sunday without making a move tomorrow with potentially activating Sam Hartman as the the third quarterback off the practice squad and then just having him be the emergency guy? Like, is that a telltale they'll do? Or is because he would be the third guy anyway, right. you just not worry about it? You take, like, is the gamesmanship, I guess, more valuable? Or you think that they'll go through with that and we might find out tomorrow one way or the other? Um, if they don't elevate Sam Hartman, um that's probably a good sign. It's not the only sign. I, I don't think we can infer, you know, totally based off that, that, you know, sure they could go with two quarterbacks into the game. And like you said, you know, just leave it at that. But yeah, if they don't elevate them, it's probably a good sign for, for Jaden, but they could of course still elevate them. Um, and then make Hartman ultimately inactive and have Jaden still play. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I think every move will be, magnified scrutinized um over these next 48 hours but yeah they're they're keeping this one close to the vest for sure yeah uh nikki javala washington post with us here on the hoffman show do you think deep down they kind of want this to go one way or the other i mean i guess like obviously there's a risk hey he's he looks like he's fully healthy but then they're holding their breath like in a way do you, you think that there's anybody whether it's dan whether it's adam up in the front office that is just like man i really hope that we just kind of you know, we don't have to, t we don't have to lock him in a broom closet because he wants to play so bad and he feels fine and, and that we just want to take this out another week or is that just not how these guys are wired? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's how these guys are wired. I, I think they want to be smart about it. You don't want to put them out there and then ultimately lose them to a re-injury and have them, you know, lose multiple weeks. Um, they are in a good spot on the team. Marcus did play well. I don't know that his performance can necessarily be replicated to that degree. I thought he, he played really well, but they're not going to face that Panthers defense every week, unfortunately. Um, so, I, yeah, I think they want him to play, but they want to be smart about it, too. And I think, you know, if, if Jaden had his way, sure, he would love to be out there every single week. Um, but I, I, I do get the sense that he's smart enough, too, to know, like, if he can't do everything that he's capable of, it really doesn't benefit the team a whole lot um you know he's a great quarterback he's been great so far but they want him at his at full strength for sure or as strength as you can be at this point in the season so when you look at Marcus and what he did last week obviously it's greatly enhanced by that Carolina defense but he also did a lot yeah. of good stuff how do you look at this matchup differently if it's Marcus versus Jaden specifically against the Chicago Bears defense and the caliber they are yeah, I think it's a lot different. I mean, that's a good defense. It's a really good defense. And I think the offense has only gotten better, especially over recent weeks, as they've made those adjustments. And, and Caleb has really, um, really blocked 
results. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be a tough challenge no matter what. Um, I think probably everybody would feel more comfortable if Jaden were back there and healthy enough to play like he normally does. Um, you know, he's a good player. He's a smart player. Makes good decisions. Um, you know, not that Marcus doesn't all the time. I, I just think, you know, and he, he, it's a it's a small sample size too, right? We're talking about, you know, six plus games really um, since he didn't play the majority of the last game. Um, but in that, he's, he's just shown consistency, consistency throughout, which over the course of uh, Marcus's career, you haven't always seen that. Um, but I also think it's, you know, a lot of these guys that they all have more reps with um, Jaden too. You know, Marcus hasn't taken one since, you know, the start of the regular season. Um, so, you know, I think that all factors in. Jaden can do things that most other quarterbacks can't. That's the reality of it. He's young, um, hasn't played a whole lot yet, but I think that's part of what's been so remarkable about what he's shown is he, he seems to be one of those rare ones. So obviously, uh, Nick Javala is with us here from the Washington Post for Not My Beat today on the Hoffman Show. Uh, when you talk to folks in the building, you look at the you know at the games yourself. We know that Brian Robinson and that running game is going to be really important to either quarterback. How confident are mm-hmm. you that they can get the running game going against a Bears defense that is good against the run uh, for as great as they've been against the pass? Uh, but they're they're yeah. definitely stronger against the pass and have given up some real explosive plays on the ground this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's certainly important if, you know, Jaden plays and, you know, you know, he's healthy enough to play, but, you know, obviously it's, it's just recovering from the hip, uh, rib thing. Um, yeah, you're, you're going to need all the help to support him, and that run game is going to be super important. Um, so you hope they can kind of set the tone early, similar to what, the way they did against Carolina. Um, I know the defense really did that. Dante Fowler, who had a heck of a game. Um, but establishing, establishing the run early and, and sticking with it consistently, I think is, is always going to be important, especially against a defense like this. And then on the other side, when you look at trying to slow down Caleb Williams and this evolved version of the Bears offense, you could say they've evolved, they've gotten a lot better, or you could say they've faced the Jaguars and the Panthers and the Titans and a bunch of really bad football mm-hmm. teams. How much do you buy the improvement from Chicago and what's the confidence level on the defensive side of the ball around the building as you've talked to guys throughout the week? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think everybody knows that he's, he's a heck of a talent. I mean, there's no denying that. Um, you know, he didn't have the immediate impact that Jaden did. And I, I know they, you know, they, they talked about having that uh, meeting with Shane Waldron and the, the team's leadership council, and then they made some adjustments to the offense. And it seems better tailored to what Caleb does well. Um, but he's, you know, even without it, I think he's still a force behind there. And the more he sees as a quarterback, the harder it's going to be um, to face him. So I, I, I don't think they can um, – I don't think you can go into it saying, oh, he just played two pretty bad teams and that's why he had good games. I, I think he's actually a quality player and he's, he's progressing um, quite a bit. But, um, but yeah, he's going to be a challenge. It's just like any mobile quarterback, you know. it's you got to find a way to contain him and, and not let him out of pocket, but, you know, and, and limit the explosives in the pass game. And it's, it's always going to be a challenge. And then the last thing I've kind of wondered, and they're pretty tight-lipped over there, but who knows what you've been able to, to get out of folks. You're good at the reporting thing, Nikki, so I'm going to see what you've got. <laughs> is how like how uh, turned up is the aggressiveness style defensively? Because I think you can make an argument that you want to make Caleb just be really patient, beat you from the pocket, you know, invite them to run the football a little bit, play these two high structures, and be a patient version of this defense that's worked at times this year. I think you could also make an mm-hmm. argument that Caleb Williams, while he will throw down the field, has not been very good at it as a pro, and that inviting him to do that, uh, while it comes with risk, is is something that might pay off. How aggressive do you anticipate Joe Witt Jr. being with the blitzes, the coverage structures, and, and, and the defense in general against Williams? Yeah, I think they, I think they could bring a good bit of pressure. Um, you know, we saw how that sort of rattled Caleb Williams in the first few games, so I would expect them to, you know, pick off some of the things that, that worked well for those teams early on. Um, I think, I, like I would imagine, they're studying, you know, the whole – Gamut of his film this this season to see you know what are some of the the weaknesses that he's still dealing with even with the adjustments even with some of the improvement that he's made over these last few weeks and really try to exploit that um but yeah i i, I to me when when coaches talk a lot about a, about aggressiveness yes it's it's partly about you know really 
you know, pressuring and trying to disrupt the quarterback. It's also about the players just playing confidently in the system. Um, and I think that's where, you know, a lot of the commanders issues have been on defense uh, up until this point is just communication and kind of getting in their own way. Um, and if they can play soundly on their own, I think they got a really talented group. Um, the problem over these last, you know, seven weeks when they've arrived is, is they just kind of step on their own foot and, and communication breakdowns or uh, blown coverages or, or missed tackles. But if they can play soundly, then I, I think they should, you know, be pretty good and hold their own against Caleb. Going to be fun to watch uh, Sunday, of course. Bears, Commanders, Nikki Javala will be there covering it for the Washington Post. Nikki, I will see you in the press box. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend until then. And thanks for your time, as always, here on the radio. Of course. Thanks for having me.